Okay, we are back. Uh, part two of rebuilding a Red Lion RJS-100. Oh yeah, better camera mount. Excellent. Uh, one big difference here, one thing I've realized and fixed since my last video, and again this is uh, the an original Red Lion pump parts, three quarter, one power, one horsepower overhaul kit with the new impeller. Let's call that the cone, you know. Uh, fishing, rubber seal, and it came with four new bolts. Uh, if y'all notice this fallout from between these parts last time, which I'm sure someone's going to ask, that is just a piece of cardboard that they used to separate. I have not found out what this was. I'm sure someone will tell me. Uh, he mentioned about a ceramic seal. It is definitely ceramic. I have gone over every single area of this. Uh, there's nothing that this fits in properly if that was in there it this thing would not seal would not even close all the way so couldn't tell you I know that that was not in the original pump when I disassembled it because I disassembled it on my front porch of course so let's put this puppy back together now the one other big thing this is gonna be really important and again this is not part you will notice this new addition, well not new, it was on there originally, I just took it off under the house. This part, which I had just hand fit in there before, is not where it needs to seat at. I uh, realized that it would not bolt together when I try it, test fitted it off video. This is a really, really set down in there good. So uh, basically what I did, uh, since it wouldn't fit originally, was I took the plate that goes on the motor first I realized uh, I could tap it lightly which I wouldn't recommend uh, around this corner and it was slowly working its way down in because originally this lip which you can see is probably not quite an eighth inch there it was above this surface double checking with all the prying I did okay so gently because this is a heavier part I tapped this for quite a while and I realized oh it's going down in there and then as a final I put the cap on here without the seal in it so I thought well I'm pressing it all at the same time and again a couple good wax on this lightly with a hammer uh, well, I'm gonna say lightly wasn't lightly I'm just gonna say lightly anyway it ended up being uh, almost an eighth inch recessed down in there so that would explain again why this thing was so dang hard to disassemble in the first place uh, because this would uh, well I guess no it wouldn't have to come off you just have to break the rubber seal and then it would come apart again the rubber seal Oops, new camera angle here. This is the new rubber seal. I did clean up. Oh, nice. A little bit smaller, so it'll stay on there by itself. Uh, once the impeller is on, then this will go on here. And I did test fit the whole thing together, bolted it down, torqued it. Perfect. There was always a little gap in here. I went back and looked at some video, some uh, pictures I took years ago, and uh, there that gap was there originally, which was also a concern of mine. So y'all notice this little thing here, and of course this will go on when I'm done. That's where all these scratches are. This is not from beating on the pump. This is from me putting this on because it was under the house, and it's uh, about. Uh, 14 inches, so it's not a lot of room under there to work. Uh, so this is, uh, you obviously have to have the water pressure coming off of the head to feed in th 
through a hose feed to your pressure switch which is would tell your pump whether to go on or off so me being who I am and that detailed person thinking you know because I've had this situation in the past where you always have that how do I get the air out of this line to this uh, I mean yeah you could pull it off and you know but then uh, after the first time yeah, I realized well yeah I just pretty much got soaked because you have the full pressure of the pump head behind it and it's really difficult to back on there when you're getting sprayed with water so I installed a small gate valve not really cheap maybe some people think it's excessive small gate valve so I can uh, simply open that uh, so if I'm working on this or taking this apart I can close that and not have the water coming the, from the pressure tank back when I'm working on electrical uh, when I'm ready to use it I can open this valve sorry, open the valve and then on this one I have a very small like ice maker type valve you put in so I can open that up I can let the water out until all the air is out of the system except for maybe a little bubble in here I close that back up and I did it fairly snugly under the house and that way it's primed your your valve is now getting the proper pressure from it so yeah that's just something else I threw on yes everything under my house is either PVC or brass uh, one steel part there but everything else is either uh, not PVC it's a higher grade uh, or brass all my fittings all my couplings except for the pump itself so I'm sure someone's gonna say where'd all the rust come from in the pump or did rust get into it no my entire system uh, the check valve all the pipe everything is PVC or a higher grade plastic or brass there is no steel between my water storage tanks uh, and even the valves on the storage tanks those are the plastic valves uh, between there and the pump and where does the main oh, main water comes in here yeah this again is a large under the house a large brass fitting uh, with the check valve on it the one-way flow valve and then it goes from there directly into the plastic system so we are ready to put this thing back together again this you really I mean it is possible when you bolt this thing together if you were to do them all at the same uh, tighten them all slightly one at a time it may press it in as is but I didn't want to take that risk I want to make sure the seal sealed good so I've already pulled off the old washer and somewhere here under all this up oh, there it was new washer clean kind of curious because there is a drain slot here this is the bottom of the motor or what sits on the bottom when it's mounted there's a drain slot here so water actually I guess if something got in there it wouldn't uh, go down this is a lot smaller washer so that is actually going to sit all the way up against the motor a lot better than the other one as you can see it was quite a bit larger the original one um, interesting anyway okay I'm doing this a lot slower because you know final assembly uh, yes so this goes on here There's nothing that holds it in one particular spot it just rotates but that is hitting all the way flush in that groove you can see that under there so it should have this small gap oh well, there we go uh, oh, bushing again just like the old one uh, this part goes against the motor this part goes against that I remember that because I looked at my old po photos when I was prying on it it was pushing against this this one doesn't flex well yeah that's kind of you might be able to hear it okay so put the new one in it's pretty snug snug I didn't think that was going to come out okay so I'm going to spin on my impeller I'm going 
to snug it the same way. Yeah, I should have left the cap off. But look, I got a screwdriver this time. So I'm going to use that and just hand tighten. Yeah, that is definitely went down a couple turns. Screwdriver in by hand. Okay, that feels pretty snug on there. Oops. Onward. Okay. So I'm going to use this as a support again. Hold that up. Old, old washer. That. Okay. Mm. Oh, yes. Something I've always done with seals is oil. I didn't see anything in particular. This is actually a can of oil that came out of my grandmother's house many, many 30, 40 years ago. Someone might recognize that. <laughs> Gunk Super Oil. Wow. Yep, still got it. Still use it. I just don't waste. I don't need to. I want to wipe my hand off, and I was just about to do the same thing over here. I have no instructions for this. I'm just thinking the oil might help to seal, maybe slide on easier. I did ask the gentleman at Red Lion, very nice gentleman, uh, Todd, spoke to a couple times, very nice gentleman in their uh, repair uh, help department, I guess. Not. Uh, salesman just in the if you need help it's their helpline yeah very nice very polite gentleman uh, so I made a few calls to him yeah put oil on the outside just for the heck of it not for any reason oops got my camera there Yes, 13 minutes, 13 minutes, wow, okay, this is taking a lot longer, okay, seal, since it fit better on this one before, I did clean these edges very good, this edge on here, uh, scraped off really good and the one around here because the old seal did leave a minute amount of seal there but very very little uh, no extra parts always a good thing to look around put my cap back on the back of the motor uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the four new bolts curious enough you're getting an idea what I'm like Three of them have JH, one of them has L8. So we have some variation in the bolts. I'm assuming they would be pretty good quality. The original ones. 307A, CY1 maybe. Hard to tell. Anyway. This is where I get nervous. On there. I've seen so many videos of people trying to hold the camera and dropping the camera and dropping parts and so well, this would be a lot easier if I had both hands and I was just determined to hand make me a harness. I was well, not hand make but some spare parts, straps, belts, whatever, and mount this thing. And yeah, I cannot imagine trying to do this and 
hold the camera in my hand. It just would not work. So now that I have this nice, which I can just glance down and I can see exactly what it sees. Okay, wiggle looks in place. Wrench, again, nervous. Whole thought is this thing has got to be drug about 60 feet to the other end of my house. It's just where I put it when I built the house. And complete it, mount it, wire it, reattach all the pipes. You have this one, which goes off to the pressure tank, which I put a quick connect on. Almost everything I put it had quick connects. This one is the one that goes to my check valve, and again, another large uh, quick disconnect. This one actually feeds off to another building, which uh, has a uh, compression, not a compression, a flare fitting on it. So again, I could just break it loose, and then I unscrew this part, unscrew this part. So it's easy to get to all the, it's easy to, fairly easy to pull out, if you can imagine. Now someone says, why did you put it 60 feet under your house? Well, when I built the original house, from the scratch, you know, from the ground up I built it, uh, it was a small house. And then about 15 years later, I thought, eh, I could really use a bigger house. I'm trying to stay in range here. I'm just slowly going around and snugging them a little at a time trying to get e equal pressure on that seal but until this thing is installed everything reassembled uh, rewired go back outside turn on my two big main storage tanks feeding water into it and then rushing back under there uh, again crawling 60 feet on my belly uh, and look at it, I won't know <laughs> if this is sealed. Uh, you know, worst case, then I have to crawl all the way back out and turn off the water, which of course there's going to be a lot of extra in the lines, because there was before. Get the oil back up there. Try to keep this upright. There we go. I know the first video was fairly shaky, but I had anti-shake on. So, I'm going to go with these. Again, again, I don't have instructions, so I don't know what the torque it should be. I know I could call up Todd. I'm going to have to go check on his name. Pretty sure it's Todd. Could be Ted. Uh, <laughs> I could ask him, but I don't have a torque wrench, so it wouldn't do a lot of good. I'm just going with uh, remembering how much stress it took to get them off originally into the house slightly different circumstances. I wasn't up nice and comfortable on my wash and dryer here. I would call those good enough. Go ahead and put our hose on just so y'all can see. And I'll could down from the other side. This is where having oil on your hands does not make it easy. There we go, more than enough. I did plan on rotating this down. I just wanted to assemble it onto the pump first. So, I was talking to one of the gentlemen down there and I told them, I said, they really need like instructions on this or video. And the gentleman I spoke to, he said, well, we have gotten permission to make videos and I said, well, y'all have so many pumps you make, that would take a lot of time. He says, exactly. So, uh, so I'm just going to decide which one I really want to point down. I guess the valve is not that important. But I'm trying to put you know, as, as little stress as I can on this because the pump does vibrate. You know, slightly, you know, when it's running. Let's go ahead and put 
that on there because you know sure enough I'll get that thing pushed on there and I'm not going to be able to get it uh, that looks just out beautiful so I'm going to cut it right about there Oop. camera is falling down Oops. oh I see anything much. It's really pointing down. Anyway, as little stress as possible. Right there. I've got the clamp on. It doesn't have to go on that far. It will also give a little bit of support to the electrical which always moves a little bit up here I wish I could show you all a video of this under the house but there's just no way I can that small of an area film effectively and again that will open the water in the system it'll fill this with of course this valve being open and this just goes out on the ground. Okay. Uh, I believe that's it. All I can really think of. Again, you can see this. There is a gap in there, even with it completely tightened down. And again, I confirmed that with very old pictures years ago when I installed the pump. But this seal is painted over from the factory so you simply cannot see it. It just looks like it's, it's fastened together so tight. It just looks like it's part of this back part. So I literally did not know there was two, two parts there. Uh, so that's, that's where you want to break it, is right there in that seal. So if you can, once the bolts are out, get uh, something, you don't want to mess up the surface from the, uh, you know, you want to grinch it up where it doesn't seal next time. But if you can gently get that break that off all the way around and then your head you know like uh, hindsight's 2020 as my father always said I've got to throw this in here because everybody knows I'm gonna say it which was the most amazing man I think on earth my parents were both absolutely amazing always backed me in everything I wanted to do uh, anyway I hope this helps somebody uh, I'm sure it will uh, this might not be just the RGS 100. I think this would come in really handy for the uh, RGS 50, RGS 75, although I haven't seen them, but I think they're just lower power. Uh, this is not the RGS 100 PREM. Uh, I have not seen one of those in person. I do not know how those get rebuilt. Uh, this is just the RGS 100, which I found out a couple days ago was uh, discontinued. They no longer make them, which is why I ordered the rebuild kit from someone. But they sent me to that company to order those. I will put a link to the uh, to Red Lion in there, and I'll put a link in the description to the uh, supply warehouse that carried the parts. And he said they had quite a few rebuild kits for this. I did order two. I have two complete rebuild kits. This is, again, if you, you look at the complexity of this... <laughs> assembly here and all the brass parts and the drain valve that would give you an indication of uh, would explain why yes me ordering two kits is not a surprise at all uh, thank you very much for everybody watching uh, this is this is for a little guy that fit in his own pump or rebuild his own pump and it's, it's just kind of lost I think this I hope and think this will will be a great assistance uh, thank you everybody uh, have a wonderful week